Gordon, as a layout that you've seen before, the Drum the Drukit layout, it's actually in our website being discussed. They wanted to make an extension to it. And the extension was like this. So it's a bridge over a river. There's a railway track going over the river, but there's also a road going over the river. And they share the same bridge. So first requirement, they have to share the same bridge. Second requirement, the bridge is narrow. So it's only a single track for the for the rail, and it's only a single track for the road. So there's only one way traffic. Not only can the local only go one way at a time, the vehicular traffic can only go one way at a time, either from left to right or right to left. And then just to complicate it further, the road at one end, as you saw, forks. You can just see it there. When you get across the road, you can either go to that part or you can take this part. So we have to cater for traffic from cars going either direction from three different possible entry points here, here, or here, and the train going either direction. So how are we going to handle that? Well, obviously the train can't cross the bridge if the cars are on it. We have to some traffic control for the cars and for the local. We can control the local by having semaphore signal, which was Gordon's requirement. So we can stop the local when there's road traffic. In other words, when any of these three areas here are letting entry of vehicles, we'd have to make sure the train wasn't trying to come on the bridge at the same time. We can control that. We also have to control the road traffic because in one way, only one of these entry points can be allowed access to the bridge. So for that, we need traffic lights. So if we've now got traffic lights and we've now got semaphore arms all trying to control who gets access to this bridge area. So how do we write a program that does that? And how do we actually automate it? So when the train comes along and there's a green light anywhere, the train has to stop. So to summarize it, we've got a single railway line. We've got a single road with a fork at one end. The traffic can go in either direction. We're going to have semaphore arms that control the local movement. We've got traffic lights for the road traffic. The traffic lights can control the single road flow, but obviously the train can't move until they're all at red. So we have to be able to stop the train. So how do we actually stop the train if it's going to be automatic? Well, we obviously we need to have detectors then. Some way of detecting the trains approaching the bridge from either side. And if any of the signal uh, traffic lights are at green, we're going to stop the local. And it'll stay stopped until all the signals are red. And then we'll let the local move. And then we won't go back to road traffic until we're certain that local has completely cleared the bridge area. So that's our, requ our requirements. So there we have it, we've got the bridge, we've got detectors at each end now. Train comes along, hits that detector, it now knows the train's there. It also knows what the status of all these three traffic lights are and has to make logical decisions based on that. So that's our starting point. So how do we stop the train if any of the lights are at green? Well, this, this middle section is the rail going over the bridge. The two ends are the approaches to the bridge, but before you get to the, the bridge itself, there's an isolated section. We're going to cut the track, in other words, here, here, and here, and here. So a train comes in and comes onto that section, there's no power. 
the train will come on and we'll stop there. Train coming in from the right hand side will come in and stop there because there's no power to it. So we're able to stop the train. How are we going to restart it? The obvious thing to do is have these two isolated sections bonded together and through a relay contact. So normally the relay contact is broken. Trains come in, hit the isolated section and will stop. And it's ready to go. We'll make the contact. When you make the contact, then the power is to all the sections. In other words, the train can carry on its journey all the way across and exit. And the same from the other side. So now we've got an idea of how we're going to do it. That's just one end. Next question is, how did we know when the train's there? We need some sort of detector. We said, okay, we'll put in a detector in that isolated section. The train comes in, stops there, but the program also knows that the train is there. If there's no train in any of these isolated sections, of course, then the traffic lights will carry on going red, amber, green, red, amber, green, and letting the traffic flow. When you get to the point a train comes in and stops there, we now know a train wants to go, but the train will be forced to stop until all three traffic lights are at red. Okay. So that's what we want. We're going to, I'm going to use a nano in this case to operate the three sets of traffic lights, to operate the two semaphore arms. I'm using easy points and servers here. I really to switch the power to detectors so that you know when the train has arrived in any of the two isolated sections. The trimmer is an add-on to change the sensitivity of light detectors. So they match the room that they've been used in. They set the trigger point depending on the ambient light in the room itself. So that's the hardware. The software, we could have used a pick or a nano. I just Happened to use a nano for it, but pick would work just as well. Because the code is relatively simple, as say, well, very simple. And that's what we ended up with. A nano. For convenience, I used a PCB it already exists. When it's used for the, the easy points kits. So there's a nano here. There's a relay to operate the isolated sections. There's where three traffic lights coming in. There's where LDR totties here, just to test it. There's a trimmer for setting sensitivity. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't know the member's capabilities for soldering and stuff. It could be a lot smaller. I just wanted to use chop blocks so to make the, the connections easier. That's it there. A chalk block, a common anode, and then three LEDs, your red, amber, green. And you'll see red, amber, green wires coming from the nano to each one. That's your three traffic lights. There's your track power. One goes to the common rails at the three different places, and the other has to come through the isolated section for the other piece. And then the LDRs let you know where it is. In terms of the nano, we've got th three lots for your traffic lights as outputs. We've got two other outputs, one to operate the relay by the isolated section and one to operate the two semaphore arms. We've got three inputs, two, three analog inputs in fact, uh, two to, uh, coming from the LDR detectors in the isolated sections and one to set the sensitivity of when they trigger. So there's the basis of the code. When you first start off, check what the sensitivity is. 
In other words, what's the setting of that little trimmer? And then turn the left hand side signal to green, let the traffic flow. And while that's flowing, when it gets to red, check, is the local sitting anywhere? Is the local in any of those isolated sections? And if not, move the traffic lights to let the right hand side of the flow of traffic at the rear. That'll go to green, green, amber, red. When it gets to red, have you arrived yet? No. Do the third lot. Have you arrived yet? No. And just keep going round and round and round. And as long as the locals haven't arrived in any of those two sections, the two waiting areas, then the sequence of traffic lights will carry on, all three of them. The minute you hit a nice little section, at that point it's detected, and then it'll jump to a procedure. That's a quote, that's the main loop for that. That's the description, the pseudocode if you like, and that's the actual code. So the main loop is only what, seven lines, very, very simple keep repeating themselves. And this code, as I've said here, only happens when all signals are at red. You've now got two torches. Which one is the train sitting at? If it's sitting at the left-hand side, set the signals on, turn on the relay, which means the train will start going. The local will move. If it's a left torch it's detected, the train will start moving from left to right, and I'll keep moving from left to right until it hits the second totty there on the right hand side. Of course, at that point, it's only the local hit the totty. The, the wagons or the coaches are still going to be on pulled behind, so you have to wait until the last part is cleared. And then maybe either a fixed delay to, to ensure that they've all gone. And at that point, you can go back put the signal arms down, turn off the power to the isolated sections, and you're back again into the main program. That's the code. Let's check the analog readings, which one is triggered. If it's the left one that's triggered, do that. If it's the right one that's triggered, it's very, very similar, except they're going to change the left to right and read the other analog to see whether it's arrived at the left-hand side. Let's have a look at it working. Here is the module then. Here's the cable coming from the controller, one wire going straight to the common rail, the other wire going to the isolated sections via this relay here. Normally, with no train, it's just going to cycle through red, red, amber, green, back to amber, back to red, and then this one, and I'll do it in a sequence from one set of traffic lights to the other. But when a train comes along and stops in an isolated section, it waits till all three are at red. And when that happens, the relay operates. And it will stay that way until the train leaves that detector and reaches that detector. Plus a few seconds to allow the whole train to clear the section. And right away, it reverts back to its normal traffic light sequence. And the same if it's coming in the other direction, train comes in, stops at the isolated section, waits for the traffic lights all to go to red, brings on the relay. No matter how long the track is from one end to the other, the relay keeps the isolated sections powered until you hit the trust it in the other direction. And then you add on a few seconds to allow the whole thing to clear.
So that's it in operation, at least on the workbench. So it's now got to be fitted into an actual layout. These are old gauge signals that the member bought. And it came with this suggestion for wiring. They're using a slide switch. So in other words, manual operation, we are using it coming, each one coming from the nano, so it's different. The other thing I'm not too happy with is they've got a common resistor here. So the common anode comes in and I'll come through one lead and back because trouble with that is that there's times when you have red and amber on so the current's going to change, which means the voltage will change, which I'm not very happy at. I prefer to have a resistor in each of those feeds rather than a common one. Given the fact that they only cost a penny or tuppence each, it's false economy. Plus, you want to balance the, the illumination of each of the red, amber, green. And probably more important, it doesn't apply in in this wiring example, but let's assume we use this common one. And for some reason, the wires coming out of the nano end up shorting. They're going to blow the output pins of the nano. They're going to destroy the nano. Whereas if you had separate feeds here, then any short will be a much lower current because you've got a resistor in each leg. So I wouldn't use that method. You probably saw that I've got one resistor at each feed there. You can maybe just see them there, there and there. So there's nine resistors sitting there, one for each, rather than put in the common. Now we've covered the, the lights. We haven't covered the semaphore arms. If you use the easy points, most of you have probably seen there's a mod for the Easy Points kit where we can have the jet going the way up and the signal bouncing the way down if we use Easy Points. So we can use two Easy Points kits, one for each semaphore arm. How do we wire that? Well, you'll see we've got one connection on the chop block, there's a wire coming from the nano going nowhere yet. That's the output to operate the semaphore arms. So the first step is to power up the boards from the same 12 volt supply that's feeding this module, you can also feed these. And that means they've both also got the same, they share the same common zero line. So a single wire coming across from the output there to feed the inputs here can trigger those. And now we've got a complete setup. So gents, that's how we went about solving a particular problem for a member. Any questions or comments or suggestions?